I do a lot of lectures about eclipses and uh, 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 several times um, my wife was in the audience and after, after my lecture, she told me that I gave the wrong answer. She had to remind me that the most spectacular eclipse that I saw was one in actually in, in, in India, in Rajasthan in 1995. And the reason that was so important is because I met my wife on that trip. I can use this mug here. Right, when the moon passes between the earth and the sun, then we have the moon's shadow crossing the earth. And that's a solar eclipse because from the earth's surface, the moon is blocking or eclipsing part of the sun's face. And that's what we'll have on, on uh, Thursday this week is a, a, is a solar eclipse where the moon is passing between the earth and the sun and blocking some of the sun's light. Now, there are three basic types of different solar eclipses. There's a partial solar eclipse where only part of the sun's disk gets covered by the moon, and it looks like a crescent at the maximum phase. Those are probably the most common type of solar eclipse. Another type of eclipse is the total eclipse, where the moon passes directly between the sun and the earth, and it blocks the, the sun's entire disk. Those are the most spectacular eclipses because when that happens, um, you block all the direct sunlight from the sun's face. Um, and you're plunged into an eerie kind of a twilight, like about a, maybe a half hour, 45 minutes after sunset. It goes from daylight to twilight in seconds. And it's very scary, really. The third type of sol solar eclipse is the one that you're gonna have this week. And that's called an annular eclipse. And during an annular eclipse, and in some ways an annular eclipse is like a total eclipse, and in some ways it's very different. So first, the similarity. Uh, it's similar in that the moon passes directly between the earth and the sun, and passes through the center, uh, across the center of the sun's disk. The difference is that during this time, the moon is in that part of its orbit where it's furthest from the earth, and it appears a little bit smaller than the sun in the sky. So during the, the maximum phase of the eclipse, when the moon is directly in front of the sun, it's a little bit smaller than the sun and it can't completely cover the sun's entire disk. It's, you, you're left with a, a thin ring. And the Greek, that the name annular eclipse comes from the Greek language where annulus means ring. So it's a ring eclipse. And that's what you'll have on, on Thursday. For most of India, it's, it's a, a partial eclipse. It's only in southern India, in the narrow path where it's annular. And it's inside that path, which is a couple, kilo, a couple uh, uh, hundred kilometers wide, where you see the ring. Outside of the ring, um, you see a crescent. The ring itself only lasts for about three minutes if you go down to that path. So any place in that path, will give you the annular ring, but the closer to the center, and Uti is, is near, the, near the center. So that's one of the good locations to see. So I think the, the, partial, the partial phases of the eclipse start a little bit after 8 a.m., maybe about five minutes after 8 a.m. Annular part where, where the, the, the sun becomes a, a ring, a complete ring, starts at about 9.27 a.m. Only lasts for three minutes, so it ends at about 9.30 a.m. Then it's followed by more partial phases. And the partial phases finally end at about 11.09 a.m. So the entire eclipse lasts three hours from about eight, a little after eight till a little after 11 a.m. I think the reason they're saying that this particular eclipse is the most dangerous one is because people don't understand the difference between a total eclipse and an annular eclipse. During a total eclipse, when the sun is completely blocked by the moon for typically two or three minutes, it's safe to look directly at it without any filters. During the annular eclipse, even during the maximum phase, uh, which is called annularity, when the sun, when the moon is surrounded by this bright ring, it's still dangerous to look at it directly. You still have to use the filters. 
And I think that's where the danger comes in. It's people's misunderstanding. These solar filters, you just you just pop them on to look look at the, the eclipse. You can have one pair and share it amongst people in a family, for instance. Another way to, to look at an eclipse is is if uh, if you have a pair of, of binoculars, uh, not to look through them, of course. But what you can do is is you can point the binoculars up at the sun, and then on on the ground or on a wall, have a piece of white paper. And you have to move the binoculars around until you see the image of the sun projected onto the white piece of paper. And that's a way that you can share the view with a lot of people. If you get the binoculars pointed just right, then you get an image of, of the crescent sun or the ring projected onto the paper. In fact, you get two because the binocular has two lenses. It takes some practice with the binoculars to get it so that it's projected onto a piece of paper. So one, a person can try this uh, the day before the eclipse, just to see if you can get the image of the sun projected on the piece of paper. The, one of the great things about an eclipse, you can you can just have a, a pair of these simple glasses or a pair of binoculars, you can project the image, or go to a science center or a museum where they have some public viewing set up. Uh, that's a great way to, to share it with the families, to go with a bunch of other people uh, that know more about the eclipse and can give you a, a, a more information. An organization called um, Space dash india.com so they do a lot of public out outreach programs so that's something to check with space dash india.com there are a lot of, of a lot of superstitions and beliefs that have built, developed about eclipses over over many thousands of years and they a, a lot of the same myths seem to arise in different cultures uh, India, as well as China, as well as African nations, and even, even among European nations. A lot of mythology, a lot of folklore. There is no scientific evidence that any of these folklores have any truth to them. Um, the only real uh, significance is that one has to be very careful looking at an eclipse uh, because of the danger of the sun's brightness. And an important point to make is there's nothing special that makes the sun any more dangerous during an eclipse. It doesn't produce any different kinds of rays during an eclipse than it does on any bright sunny day. But the, the only big difference is our curiosity. During a bright sunny day, we know it's dangerous to look directly at the sun. But during an eclipse, we're tempted because of curiosity to look at the sun and stare at it. And that's, that's where the danger lies. The sun is dangerous to look at on any bright sunny day, and it's dangerous for the same reason it's dangerous to look at it during the partial phases of an eclipse, because the sun is still so bright, even though part of it is covered up, it's still too, lit, too bright to look at directly without using some techniques like a filter or some kind of a projection technique that, that you can use. The eclipse can be a stepping stone to get kids off their smartphones and off the television set and make make believe and, and start studying the real world around them. So I hope that that will be the inspiration for this eclipse.